Hey there, curious minds. Do you ever feel like the world of tech moves so fast you need like a shortcut just to keep up? Well, you're in the right place because today we're taking a deep dive into something genuinely exciting for anyone who codes or, you know, simply loves seeing innovation at work. Grok Code Fast One. Our mission today is pretty clear. We're going to unpack this new AI model from XAI, figure out what it is, what it means for your projects, and why it feels like it could really shift things in software development right now. Think of it maybe as gaining a virtual junior developer uh, available for free directly within your coding environment. Sounds pretty cool, right? It really does. And what's fascinating here, I think, about Grok Code Fest 1 isn't just the features on paper, but how it seems poised to change the game for, well, accessibility and autonomy and software development. It's really about empowering developers, individuals, and teams, giving them cutting-edge AI help without those uh, typical big price tags. Okay, so let's get right into it then. Our sources describe Grok Code Fest 1 as a lightweight, high-performance AI model. But what does that actually translate to for someone like you, you know, maybe staring at a blank screen or trying to squash a complex bug? Right. So at its core, Grok Code Fast 1 is an AI model specifically engineered for something called agentic coding. And that term's important. It's key because it signals uh, a real difference from older AI assistants that mostly just did code completion, you know, suggesting the next few characters. Instead, Grok Code Fast 1 is designed to act more well, autonomously. It can actually plan out a whole coding task, generate the code it needs, and even refine it, all based on, say, natural language prompts or just the structure of your project. It's not just suggesting the next word. It's trying to understand the overall objective. Huh. So it's more than just a really, really smart autocomplete. It's almost like it has some kind of basic understanding of the development process itself. Exactly that, yeah. yeah. Imagine it like... Um, like a virtual junior developer kind of embedded right into your IDE, your integrated development environment. This AI can plan coding tasks, can handle those boring repetitive processes, uh, identify and help debug errors, and even suggest improvements. And the sources highlight some pretty impressive specs that make this possible. A processing speed of up to 92 tokens per second and this massive 256K token context window. Okay, for those of us maybe less fluent in the AI jargon, what does 92 tokens per second and 256K token context window actually mean in practical terms, like when I'm actually coding? Sure, good question. So think of tokens as basically the chunks of language or code the AI works with words, parts of words, symbols. So 92 tokens per second. That means speed, like near instant responses and suggestions. When you're coding, when you're in the zone, even waiting a few seconds for an AI suggestion can totally break your flow. This speed means it keeps up with you, keeps pace with your thoughts. Crucial for things like rapid prototyping, right? Or just staying focused. And the 256K token context window, that's also hugely significant. It means the AI can essentially remember and understand a massive amount of your code base all at once. Not just the file you're in, but potentially hundreds of related files. This sort of deep context awareness drastically cuts down on irrelevant suggestions and errors. It makes sure the code it generates actually fits your project's architecture and what you're trying to do. That capability is honestly a real differentiator for building coherent, high-quality software. Wow, okay. That deep context sounds incredible incredibly powerful, right. especially for, yeah, preventing those frustrating moments where suggestions just don't fit. Now, here's something that really caught my eye. Our sources keep mentioning that Grok Code Fast One is available for free across multiple platforms. In a market where, let's be honest, cutting edge AI often costs a lot, how big a deal is this free aspect? What kind of ripples might we see from this? The free aspect is, yeah, I don't think it's an exaggeration to call it a monumental disruptor. It really does largely eliminate those financial barriers that have kept powerful AI tools out of reach for many. And this isn't just about saving a few bucks for individuals. It's about fundamentally democratizing access. Who gets to experiment? Who gets to learn? Who gets to innovate using advanced AI? Think about startups on a shoestring budget or students learning to code, maybe independent developers. For them, this is like an accelerator. It means the best tools aren't just for the companies with the deepest pockets anymore. It helps level the playing field for innovation, truly. And it's not like it's some obscure tool you have to hunt down. As of, well, now, August 2025, it's pretty broadly available. You'll find it integrated across a really wide range of development environments. So on the commercial side, uh, it's rolling out in public preview for GitHub Copilot users, right inside VS Code, specifically for the Pro, Pro Plus, Business, and Enterprise plans. And early feedback seems pretty positive. People are saying it makes Copilot faster, gives better context. Some are even comparing it favorably to models like Claude Sauna 4 for, you know, following instructions well. 
You'll also see it being used by Winsor, which is an AI native IDE. It helps power their in-house models and their credit system, making their free tier pretty useful. And then for developers who lean more towards open source or want flexibility, Grok Code Fast One is becoming a key part. It's available in Cursor, that IDE known for mixing different LLMs like GPT-40 and Claude Sonnet. Its affordability makes it a natural fit for Cursor's free tier. Plus, you'll find it deeply integrated into open source platforms like Klein, Kilo Code, RuCode, and OpenCode. These platforms really value transparency and letting developers tweak things. RuCode, for instance, uses Grok Code Fast 1 to boost its custom modes, allowing for really specific tasks like security checks or performance tuning. So with this wide availability, it means you can pretty much pick the platform that suits your workflow best, whether that's enterprise stability or open source freedom. That's a seriously impressive reach for such a powerful tool. It really highlights that democratizing effect you mentioned, just getting it into more hands. So, okay, taking all that in, what does this actually feel like when you're using it day to day? What are the main strengths, the practical benefits of Grok Code Fast One that our sources keep bringing up beyond just, you know, being available everywhere? Right. Well, the practical benefits really start to stack up. First, that blazing fast performance, it's not just a number on a spec sheet. It translates directly into a smoother, less interrupted coding flow. Like imagine you're quickly trying out a design idea. Getting near instant code suggestions keeps you moving. Or you hit a bug and you get intelligent debugging help almost immediately. That's huge. And that 256K context window ensures the AI isn't just like randomly guessing. It actually seems to understand the larger puzzle you're working on. Then there's the agentic coding part itself. This really changes how you interact with the AI. Instead of just finishing your lines of code, Grok Code Fast One can actually plan out a series of steps, do them, and even suggest fixes for tests. So for example, if you tell it, hey, create a Python script to parse this JSON log file and pull out the error messages, you can outline the steps, write the code, maybe even point out common pitfalls in parsing JSON. It acts much more like a collaborator. This basically automates a lot of that repetitive grunt work that eats up so much developer time. Yeah, okay. So it's like having a co-pilot who actually understands the roadmap, not just reading the next street sign. Exactly, yeah. That's a good way to put it. And the cost effectiveness is a massive strategic plus. Being free means individuals, small teams, they can use top-tier AI without worrying about the budget. It opens doors for experimentation and learning that might have been too expensive otherwise. And its lightweight design means it doesn't demand a supercomputer. It's accessible even if you don't have the latest, greatest hardware. The seamless integration is another big win. Whether you're already comfortable in VS Code with GitHub Copilot, or you're trying out an AI native IDE like Windsurf, Grok Code Fast One tends to just plug right in. There's usually not a huge learning curve or major disruption to how you already work. And its compatibility with open source tools like Kilo Code and RuCode just extends that reach further, especially for people who like to customize their setup. And finally, those context aware suggestions are just really precise. Because it has a better grasp of your whole project and what you're trying to achieve, its suggestions are much less likely to be irrelevant or off base. That means fewer errors, less time wasted reviewing bad code, and generally higher quality output from the get go. As for like specific use cases, the sources point to it being great for rapid prototyping. You know, quickly getting ideas into functional code for demos or agathons. It's also described as a powerful tool for debugging and refactoring, especially with older or messy code. It can often spot tricky issues. It seems really ideal for small to medium projects, where maybe individuals or small teams need efficient tools without breaking the bank, and definitely for educational purposes. Its extensibility and ease of use make it a fantastic resource for students learning modern coding. That's a really compelling list of capabilities. It seems to cover a lot of ground for developers. But, you know, we always say no tool is perfect for everything, right? Where might Grok Code Fast One hit its limits? What should developers keep in mind for, you know, a balanced view? When might they need to reach for something else? That's a super important point. Yeah. And connecting this to the bigger picture, it's absolutely crucial to understand where any tool, even one as capable as Grok Code Fast One, has its boundaries. It really raises that question for developers. Okay, when is this the right tool? And when do I need to maybe augment it or use something different? So our sources do highlight a few things. For really complex or highly novel projects, Grok Code Fast One might need a bit more guidance, more detailed prompting, maybe some back and forth refinement to get the best results. It's excellent at solving known problems, common patterns. But if you're tackling something genuinely unique, like a totally new software architecture or a very abstract concept, you might find you need to guide it more explicitly or maybe break the problem down into smaller chunks it can handle better. It's probably not going to you know, design a revolutionary new operating system from scratch on its own. 
Another limitation that comes up is its lack of native multimodal support. Basically, this means it doesn't inherently process things beyond text and code. So if your application involves, say, understanding images or video as a core part of the coding task, like maybe you're building an advanced medical imaging app or something, Grok Cofast 1 wouldn't natively handle those visual inputs. You'd need to bring in other specialized tools for that. Right. So brilliant with code, but it doesn't see pictures or video, at least not yet. Exactly. And for those truly massive, intricate, multi-file projects we talked about, while its context window is impressively large, developers might still find situations where they need to complement it. Maybe use it alongside other tools or even more advanced, perhaps larger models for specific complex parts. The sources mention things like potentially Claude 4 or GPT-5 for achieving that absolute maximum precision or just handling the sheer scale of some really monumental projects. You can think of Grok Code Fast 1 as maybe your super efficient core assistant your go-to, but sometimes for those really grand challenges, you might need a team of specialists. It's more about building an intelligent tool chain rather than expecting one single tool to do absolutely everything. That makes total sense. It's about having the right tools in your toolbox, maybe a combination of them for whatever job you're tackling. So let's try and bring it all together then. In a world that's just brimming with AI coding assistance, new models popping up all the time, what's the real differentiator here? What should make developers really sit up and pay attention to Grok Code Fast 1? What makes it stand out? I think what's truly compelling, what really makes Grok Code Fast 1 stand out is its unique combination, its balance. It hits this sweet spot between speed, affordability, and that deep agentic intelligence. It's not just fast or just free or just smart. It's the way all three work together that creates this really practical, really empowering solution for developers. It delivers genuine, tangible value without that premium price tag, which lets developers move quicker and focus their energy on the higher level, more creative problem-solving aspects of their work. The source is really painted as a forward-thinking tool that crucially widens access to these advanced AI capabilities. And whether you prefer the transparency and flexibility you get with open source integrations, things like Kilo Code or Klein, or you need the stability and maybe enhanced features within commercial platforms like GitHub Copilot, Grok Code Fast 1 seems to have carved out a really significant niche. It genuinely empowers developers to work smarter, not necessarily harder, by handling a lot of that heavy lifting intelligently. That's a great way to synthesize its value. Yeah, that balance seems key. So if you're listening and you're ready to give this a try, getting started sounds pretty simple. Our sources say you basically just need to enable Grok CodeFast 1 in the settings of whatever platform you're using, like uh, in GitHub Copilot's feature settings, or install the right extension from, say, the VS Code Marketplace. Seems like a great chance to experiment learn something new, and maybe even give feedback to help shape where these tools go next. Exactly. And, you know, this whole deep dive into Grok Code Fast 1, it really shows us something about the future of coding. Mm -hmm. It's becoming more and more collaborative, not just between humans, but significantly with these intelligent AI agents, yeah. which I think raises a really interesting question for all of us, for developers. As AI gets more agentic, as it starts handling not just the repetitive stuff, but even some of the planning, what new skills, what kind of mindset will be most valuable for us humans who are using these powerful assistants to build whatever comes next? Absolutely. That's the key question, isn't it? It's all about adapting, focusing our human creativity where it really shines and leveraging these incredible tools effectively. Well, we hope this deep dive has given you a clear shortcut to being really well informed about Grok Code Fast One and maybe sparked a few aha moments for you along the way. Until next time, keep learning, keep building, and definitely keep being curious.